Okay, folks, here is the dreaded hormone update. So as I've been updating here with my journey from taking pills to patches to injections and how high my estradiol was like in the pregnancy range. And so right now, it's just crazy how little I'm taking. Okay, very, very little. I'm taking two milligrams every eight days and barely injecting anything, which is actually pretty good to not inject too much because it's my legs are very sensitive if I inject a lot it ends up you know hurting hurting to walk and all that sort of stuff but anyway so I got my lab work results back and I even spoke with the doctor as well they were slightly lower than they were last time but it's still quite high however the doctor didn't seem too concerned about that because when you're doing injections they do fluctuate they do go up and down this and this would have been three days after my injection it was like I want to say close to 400 or something along those lines I don't remember exactly I don't I don't I don't have it pulled up sorry um, regarding everything else in the lab work a lot of the other stuff has actually improved like I had for many years, I had low alkaline phosphate, I believe is what it's called. Let me take a quick look, just so I'm not misspeaking. Alkaline uh, phosphate taste. taste. Okay, so that was actually low. That was actually in low realm for many, many years. When that's low, it usually can mean a variety of different things. And I've mentioned this to the doctor before, such as mal malnutrition. It, um, it can be due to various mineral deficiencies, such as magnesium and zinc. Protein deficiencies. Hormone replacement therapy. Um, underactive thyroid, which that, that, was, that was a little bit of a problem. Last time I got the lab work, it was the levels were in the realm of slightly underactive which is very very weird because I'm very thin I can't gain weight if usually if you have underactive thyroid you're putting on on the pounds for me it's I'm losing weight I'm losing weight when it's underactive it, it, my body works in opposite ways but anyway so that had been low for many years that was even low back when I was still a male when I remember it, it being tested like by a decade ago, like around the time I started HRT or slightly slightly before. Okay, so that level was still very, very low for many years. Now, the problem, the problem that I had with that is that when that level is low, especially chronically low, and you're, if you have malnutrition or whatever the other things is, it can wear down your, your teeth. It can wear down the enamel on your teeth, which is... Certainly a problem if you're taking HRT and all this other stuff, and that's certainly a major problem. And I noticed when I first started taking um, HRT way back in the day, it's like my teeth started getting very, very yellow. It was like all of the enamel was like just wearing off. It was like, bye-bye, gone. Now it's not there anymore, you know? So it's like, ooh, thank you, HRT. I appreciate that. But anyway, kind of getting back to... The lab work that level was actually fine i was like wow okay that was actually in it it didn't it didn't it, it, it didn't increase you know just a little tiny bit it increased to the point where it's actually in range now which is good my white blood cell count which for many many years as well was also low i believe the lymph the lymph white blood cells was low um now it's normal Cholesterol is always fine. Blood sugar is always fine. Really, the only other thing was my vitamin D was a bit low. Uh, so, you know, we're coming out of the end of winter here. Haven't been outside as much. So I'm going to be increasing being outside as well as, you know, increasing my vitamin D dosage. So I was taking like a thousand before. Probably going to take like 2000 now. Hopefully that'll boost it up a bit. So, but, um, yeah, as I said, the doctor was not concerned about the estradiol being as high as it was right now. But it seems to be fine. Now, a lot of the other side effects I was talking about were had a bunch of mucus, difficulty breathing, all that sort of problem. That has been not a thing anymore. And the interesting thing is last time I spoke with, with the doctor a few months back, it was kind of unrelated, but it also was related. She had mentioned 
like you want to look at things that are unrelated that could be causing some of these problems. And she had mentioned like her husband was allergic to fruit and she had to microwave it for like 10, 10 to 15 seconds in order to kill off the pollen that was causing, you know, the allergic reaction he would have. I don't have an allergic reaction to a fruit. That's a... Uh, Let's be clear about that. I don't, you know, my throat doesn't swell up. It doesn't get itchy, all that sort of stuff. But I would have a banana every single morning. I would have a banana every single morning. And, you know, it was usually morning time to, well, no, it was actually after lunchtime, like early afternoon into maybe like four or so is when I would have the most, be like the most dehydrated, mucus, difficulty breathing, all that sort of stuff. So we're talking many hours after and it was associated with lunch because if I didn't eat lunch, it wouldn't happen. So I was like, there is no way. But I actually microwave the banana now in, in the morning in my oatmeal. And that has helped my tongue a lot because I, I've talked about all this buildup I get on, on my tongue. That's pretty much gone. And the other thing that I've really done to help with the issues after lunchtime is I've had to cut back what I'm eating for lunch. I would eat a full meal. I may, look, I may not look it, okay? I may look super skinny and anorexic, which I'm not. I know people are saying, people say that sort of stuff all the time or whatever. I'm not. I would eat full meals, okay? And the problem is when I ate a full meal for lunchtime, that is when it would destroy me. And I would be thinking, maybe it's the carbs. Maybe it's what I'm eating, you know? Maybe it's the type of stuff that I'm eating. I don't know and I couldn't ever figure it out because I would literally have a high carb meal for lunchtime and I would be destroyed thinking it's got to be be the carbs. Let's do a low carb lunch. Low carb lunch, maybe high in fat and protein, destroyed. I'm like, oh, obviously it wasn't the carbs then. And then I'll have, sometimes I will make a lot of le leftovers and I'll have the same exact meal lunchtime for like three or four days. Two of the days I could be wrecked, the other day I, I could be fine, the other day I could be eh, kind of in the middle. And I'm like, there's nothing different. I eat the same breakfast, I had the same exact lunch, what is different? What is different? I couldn't figure it out. Well, since I've been eating less for lunchtime, so I'm not having like a full meal, I'm, I'm eating less, all the problems that I've had regarding the extreme dehydration, the brain fog, the inability to to breathe, all the all, all the uh, mucus build up, pretty much completely gone. It happens rarely, very very rare, uh, rarely. It it can happen, but it doesn't barely happen at all. Now the downside is because I'm eating less, I've lost weight. I have actually lost significant amount of weight, ten pounds, which when I was already very underweight as it is. Now I'm even more under underweight I'm sure you can I can see it in my face I can see it like in my like hip area and like like my abdomen in my ribs it, it's not good it's not good but I how do I feel so much better you know what I mean so let me just make that clear for anyone who may be watching this you'll be thinking you know you are anorexic you got an eating disorder I do not I do not if you saw my relationship with food and what I eat, the type types of things that I eat. I make, look, would someone be making videos talking about eating stuff and all this sort of stuff? I don't think so. So you can think whatever it is that you want about that. I don't care. It's just not true. It's a shame though that I've had to cut back just to feel better, <laughs> you know, just to feel better. I have increased my protein intake and all that sort of stuff, doing this and that, but it doesn't really change the weight. I eat just so much food and I don't absorb it. It's like, where does it go? I don't know where it goes, you guys. I don't, you know what it is? I can take you to the bathroom. That is where it goes. <laughs> you know, after digest and process, I don't absorb any of it, you know, it's just a shame. But um, that's really the uh, the biggest down downside. But other than that, I feel perfect minus the sex drive. I have really no sex drive at all. And that's really the uh, main thing kind of gonna, gonna be worked on now because my testosterone is very low. It's under 10. Testosterone is very, very low. So we'll see what we can, we can do about that. Doctor doesn't wanna prescribe the testosterone uh, maybe as like a last resort sort of thing. Like try some other stuff first, you know? 
We will see. We will see. But that's basically the update that I wanted wanted to give you here. How you know things have really improved since last time. I don't feel at like one hundred percent like I did last year around this time. If you remember, I made videos when I went off the pills and I switched over to patches. That's when I felt the best. I had a massive sex drive. It was it was crazy. I had so much energy. I was able to breathe like 100%. Now my my uh, breathing's maybe like 85 or 90 90 90%. So it is still very very good. It's just not perfect like it was like la last year. And I still think it is related to the hormones. Um, I'd be curious if I lower down the uh, the uh, dosage, you know, would it would it actually help some of that? I don't know. I don't know. But regardless, it's just, it's interesting. It really is. So that's all for today. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.